Hey everybody and welcome to the second summary of Martin vs. The Machine where we're going through what happened with the design of Marble Machine 3 in the last week. So, as you know, I want to give it a third try. I don't feel I have exerted all my abilities and I want to make a CAD model to see if I'm going to make a physical machine. If the CAD model is promising, I will make a physical machine. If the CAD model is not promising, I will finally be able to give up on the project. So let's dive into it. So this is how the machine looked week zero. This is how the machine looked after the first day of week one. And this is how the machine looks today at week two. So if I switch back, you can see that there's a little more refined. We're still very, very early, <laughs> having a lot of design things open in this process. But let's go into the changes. And one week ago, I was adamant that the programming wheels and the loop wheel would not be removable. We would only have one and we would reprogram it on the machine. But I've changed my mind since. We're going to make these programming drums uh, Actually, in mechanical music, they're called programming drums and not programming wheels. If you check this little fork over here, this makes it very easy to just lift the wheel off and take it off the machine. And we can do the same with the loop drum. And then you can reprogram the wheels off. So you have two sets and you can just take the wheel off and put a finished programmed uh, wheel onto the machine, which will make it like super easy to play fast songs on tour. That's what we want, right, Hannes? Oh, yeah. Fast and nice. So... Just like these summaries right here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this is also going to make it easier to transport the machine because it looks like from sideways view, how much thinner... So if we have a sl slim door opening, we can just take the wheel off and the machine goes through a smaller door. So that saves like half a meter right there in width. So... That's exciting, but maybe this is even more exciting. We found out there's such a thing as a hammer jammer for a bass guitar. Check this out. Th Sir 3K has found a video here for us to enjoy. So notice how the bass player is barely touching these activation pads. And shout out to Big Walnut Music YouTube channel for this. A nice slapping of the bass right there. Yep. Now imagine some marbles there. Exactly. <laughs> so what's cool with this technique, if we look at the model, we actually have a very crude version of a hammer jammer on the machine nowadays. And I made these uh, blue dots so you can see how two marbles can play on one and the same string. So we can actually have eight hit points and we can also flare out the hit points. If you remember, we had problems making the marble gate on the previous machine. And here we can flare it out. One thing to mention in this frame, I really hate how the base sticks out on the <laughs> left side. <laughs> it's not fi finalized yet. My hate is burning with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> so like, if you see it from the front like this, either I need to make the machine like wider or we need to hide the base into it because I don't want it to look like some kind of add-on. It And the crank is also wrong. So we have to fix this in the future, but that's for the next time. So the third design change that came up this week, which is actually a viewer suggestion, dividing head style timing clutch. If you remember on the first, uh, second machine, I had this beautiful brass timing clutch. We need the same functionality on uh, Marble Machine 3 and a viewer suggested to use a dividing head style timing clutch. It's from the machinist world. So shout out to DNH for this brilliant suggestion. Immediately when I saw the sketch I wanted to use the idea. So if we take a look down here behind the flywheel there is our a little bit ugly looking but uh, in progress, uh, work in progress, uh, dividing head style timing clutch. Uh, during the live stream, it was a lot of confusion about what this is actually doing. So if you don't know what this does, it's these blue drums, it fixes the position rel relative to each other. So the timing clutch is going to play in being one setting for 80 BPM music, another setting for 120 BPM music to deal with latency issues. And 
The coolest thing with having these wheels removable is that the people who are programming the programming can also fix the setting of the time and clutch. So that's already done when we supposed to change song. What do you think, sir, 3K? I mean, this is absolutely brilliant news, right? So I happy with this, even though I also had a hard time following along. <laughs> now I know what this part is about. Thank you. Yeah, it's 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 latency issues. It's it's a little convoluted, but it's <laughs> going to be awesome. So here I'm just showing you the second setup. So imagine you can have another setup on the spare set during a concert. And here, my friends, the kicker. This is the kicker. This is the thumbnail of this video. This I'm so excited about this. Do, 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 do. Um, this was uh, two music programs on one wheel. So this is the registrator right here. If we look at it from behind, and you know this uh, view from the second uh, marble machine. But here's the kicker. So you see one programming pin right there. What if, what if we, since the programming pins are so small, three millimeter in diameter, what if we add a second channel? This is actually also a viewer suggestion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the brilliance of the live streams. Yeah. That the awesome chat is supplying us great ideas and helping along with this project. So nice. So when I saw this suggestion, I'm going to shout you out next week because we don't have that slide up now. When I saw this suggestion, I was like, no, that's not possible. And then I realized this is possible. For, because what happens if we have two separate programs? So you can see the red programming pins and the meta programming pins. And what happens if we figure out a way to slide the sliders over like this? Ooh. <laughs> because so here we're playing the um, gray program and here we're playing the red program. This will give us some musical opportunities. So say that we're playing like the, the um, uh, metal program first, the gray program. So something simple like, uh, let's start here. So C minor. Half ways of the loop wheel here. And normally here we need to loop and start playing the same thing again right here. But wait for it. <laughs> A new world appears. Yes. And with a little trick, I play half the length. Now I can give a call back. Second half of program B. Coming to the end. What do you think about that? That. <laughs> 3,000 <laughs> tears in my eyes here. <laughs> tears in my eyes, you know? So it just adds. And also, like, I can play program A four times straight and then surprise everyone with program B. We need to figure out how this is going to be done. Uh, but this is not random something I come up with. This has been done in the history of mechanical music. Let's show Lucas Wendel from Siegfried's Music Cabinet explaining how this cool works. The thing with the barrel inside the organ here, if you come closer, Hannes, is that there is actually seven songs programmed on this same barrel. And Lucas showed, you can show how we're... If, uh, so first you need to have this up because if you would move the barrel side to side, you would break some pins. But after that, you can lift this and this like knife gets a catch in a groove. Okay. And after that, if you're in the groove, you know you have the uh, right melody and you can read what melody you have and just count the grooves in the shaft. And I can't wrap my head around the work of placing these <laughs> bridges and these nails. There's still one person left who one. <laughs> does this kind of work uh, at a really good uh, quality, but uh, you'll have Soon to pay too, right? once. And uh, the waiting list is something like uh, 10 years now. Wow. And he's 80 years old. 
I hope Marble Machine 3 will play tighter than that, but <laughs> I love this example. So, um, seven songs on one uh, loop. So, we are only planning to have two. So, the music demo showed what we can do with two songs. I'm very excited about this. And by the way, the original Marble Machine and Marble Machine X is going to go to Lucas Vandel uh, and Siegfried's Music Cabinet Museum. So you will be able to eventually go there and see all the machines. And I'm dreaming about playing a concert with all three machines next oh, to each other. That's going to be so cool. That would be something, right? Uh, let's see here. Uh, 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 uh. So, and now my slides are working. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let me just fast forward to where we ended off. I had to make a little bit of a mock-up. We had a premiere without issues, so we need some issues this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CNC cut square tubing frame. So here's the next design idea. And uh, this is just sketches, but a company like 247steel.com, I think, they have a rotary thing that can CNC laser cut um square tubing in different parts of the tube. So you can cut this like location notches. So for example, this angle, you can see how it puzzles into the side of the square tubing. So these openings would be with CNC precision. On either side, you can cut all the way through or only one wall. And an experienced welder will be able to weld this with high precision. And it looks like a coat rack right now, but yeah, that's, that's okay. Next design idea. <laughs> <laughs> One plain marble gate. So we figured out a way um, to save sideways space to build a marble gate in only one plane. So here's the left side of the sandwich. Here's the escapement wheel. And then you have the escapement and the marble dropper in the middle. And then you close the sandwich on the side. So the marbles will lie there, cozy and side efficient. So I'm very happy about that. And now less dumb design requirements. So when I made the last video last autumn, I showed exactly why people are still asking why I ended the Marble Machine X. And I see a lot of you are ref referring them to this video. And I'm super grateful for that because I thought I made it painfully clear why in this video. And for my two previous machines, I had no design requirements. So this time around, we will make design requirements. So what I've done is that I've uploaded on the website, which is a kind of documentation central that you can find on wintergatan.net with all the important files for the project we're working on right now, the Marble Machine 3. You can find this design requirement document, which is a work in progress. And you can also leave comments in um, uh, the document. Please uh, keep, I think I have 200 comments now, so please just leave <laughs> if you really think that you have uh, something useful to add. But eventually I will um, finish this design requirement document. And when a lot of people want me to write all the design requirements first before designing, and I'm going to do it a little bit in parallel because since we're working in CAD, I can actually iterate on the design requirements for some time leading up to a design freeze, and then I should not touch the design requirements. Yeah, you said also like the cadding right now is a bit like sketching also. Yeah. So nothing is finalized. It's also get to play around a little bit. Yeah, I'm, yeah. it looks final in CAD, but I'm sketching and I'm, I'm just looking at opportunities. Um, so just... Uh, Something that I wrote in the overview of design requirements, the overarching, overarching design style will be form from function absolutism, meaning kinetic fingers, washer stacks, looks that make you smile when you look at it, or cup holders will not be a part <laughs> of Marble Machine 3. So with that, we have come to our design live streams that we did last week. We did almost nine streams and we had brilliant feedback. Yeah. And we have upload links um, on the website where you can uh, make your suggestions. And this time around, I have to tell you, I'm so happy that I don't have a physical machine that limits me in what I can listen to. If you come with good advice, I will implement it. So this CAD model, I just refreshed the link on the website so you can download this CAD model as it is and hack away and send 
us your suggestions. So that has been so much fun uh, with you, Hannes. Yeah. And we're going to keep on next week. And this r- leads me up to wonderful wow, news. Wow, this is so cool. This is, this is cool. I have to take a little drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are often wondering what the other members of Vintergatan are doing while you're designing a machine. I can give a little update on David because <laughs> David, the let me say, eminent bass player of Vintergatan, you can see up to the left there. David sent in a song for the Swedish part of the Eurovision Song Contest. And so this is the artist. Um, Cornelia Jacobs and the other songwriter Isa Molin to the right there and Cornelia killed it yeah and David won they won the Swedish Melody Festival which means he gets to represent Sweden in the Eurovision Song Contest and that's that's amazing it's like for all of you out there uh, this is bigger than Super Bowl okay for for us (laughs) (laughs) for Swedish people we live it's like People remember, what did you do in the Eurovision Song Contest final 1997? You know, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's huge. I've been a fan my whole life and seeing David win this makes me so happy and proud and he really deserves it. And being here with my friend Sir 3K oh. and you all makes me also very, very happy. We're on a good roll. We'll see you in the live streams over at the second channel and next week. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Round one, fight!